the Sklansky uh, Chebukov push numbers. Yeah, this guy here, Sklansky, we had in a uh, couple of previous videos. He and his, and his buddy here, they, they came up with this crazy idea. They said, look, how would it be that uh, when you know we're in the small blind, we turn over our hand, show it to our opponent in the big blind, and then push all in? So the opponent can only call, or will only call, when he has a positive expected value. All right, when he's better in equity, say, versus the strength of your hand. They then ran that, you know, close to infinity, and they came up with the following numbers. This is extremely useful for you short stack strategy players out there, and especially for your tournament players. A lot of the ICM push fold charts, of course, based directly on ICM, but when you get down to it, a lot of the numbers correspond very much to these push fold ranges. Basically, this is how it works out. Um, as you see here, the end call and the end fold are the number of hands that will call or fold given that you move all in with the maximum stack size. So as you see here, when you turn over your hand uh, in a small blind with aces, uh, you show your opponent aces and then you push. There's only one hand out of the remaining right, that are going to call you down, namely the other pair of aces. And so what this is saying here, you can push for any given stack size um, at any uh, given big blind level. Uh, what I've done then is taken the numbers that are published at this website and divided them here by two for the numbers on the button. This is a list just straight from uh, pairs down aces all the way down to kings and at the very, very end, two, three. And this is then sorted uh, based on stack sizes. Yeah. People have taken these numbers and sorted them differently. They've put them into charts where you know, based on certain ranges, you can push at um, at certain stack sizes, which is more practical for online play. But uh, this just to give you an idea of what that looks like. You can actually find those charts online. Uh, just yeah, search for that, and yeah, you can you can make moves. You can make uh, pre-flop pushes from the small blind, even from the button and from the cutoff uh, that you normally wouldn't make, um, and you can do that profitably based on these numbers. Uh, it's just a stroke of genius again from Sklansky, uh, and uh, yeah, this uh, Chebukov guy is apparently working with him. Uh, working with him, definitely something to have a look at, uh, especially for tournament play and uh, short stack strategy players, as well as big stack strategy players. Um, there are certain situations where you can definitely implement uh, these numbers into your game. So after having looked at this, um, you know, these actual heads-up matchups with the um, hands that you know of your opponents, right, and uh, both heads up and uh, three-way and multi-way pots. I want to look into um, the hero's equity versus villain's ranges. Right? And the range is essentially any group of hands that an opponent will play in the same way in that position in that game. If you have uh, poker tracking software, for example, that says, you know, this guy's raising 11% uh, from the middle position, for example. That could be expressed as this range right here. Sevens are better, ace nine suited are better, king ten suited uh, are better, uh, queen ten suited is basically queen and jack suited, uh, ace ten o and uh, king queen o. Uh, that, let's say you're holding as pair of nines, uh, your equity with nines against that entire range is 49 percent. So that's kind of how you can how you can implement this program into your play. Or, you can be along among the the lucky few who happen to come across uh, this chart right here. And instead of having to, you know, when you're online, uh, enter in every single time, you know, you get a hand very diligently. Okay, yeah, this percentage versus my hand, and seeing what your equity breakdown is. I took this information and and adjusted a bit. What it shows is your equity with this holding versus uh, the equity of. Uh, against a certain range. So for example, if you know that this guy under the gun is only raising 1% of the time, you can put him on that range. Queens are better, uh, you know, 9 times out of 10. Uh, that against your hand in the long run, right, is only uh, going to give you 19% equity. If the same guy under the gun is raising, let's say he's more of a wacky wild kind of guy, uh, raising 17 or even 15%, now your equity is looking much better. You're already in the green. Uh, the yellow, yellow cells are then marginal, given rake. Uh, the green is pretty much good to go for a push. 
that being said, you know, within this range, you've got to have a really high sample size to be very clear and very certain that he's on this range. And even within this 15% here, you know, maybe his, his range is weighted more towards um, pairs. Maybe he's playing any pair here, uh, fewer aces, you know, and not, you know, only king, jack, or bet, or something like that. Um, you might, you know, given certain circumstances, come to the 15% with a completely, well, not completely different, but quite a different range. But this is a relatively good representation of what that kind of number would represent. This chart is just really, really useful, like I said. I mean, you don't have to go entering everything in the poker stuff every time you play. But you get this chart to, you know, see pretty much how you stand against his entire range. Now, let's say he limps under the gun, right, with this range. And you can probably put him on basically these hands as well. Um, you isolate, okay, with your nines, right? That means you raise him up. And he comes over the top, okay? So you two bet, and he then three bets uh, in poker stats terminology. And he's only got a three bet number now of 5.1%. And if you look at his limp raise stat, and you have a really high N, maybe it only looks like this. So all of a sudden, you've reduced his range based on your understanding of statistics and... and uh, yeah, this information from 15% to 3%. Now, you don't, you know, this idea of this range is long gone at this point when he 3 bets, you know, limp 3 bets, right? And now your equity looks like this against this guy. Now, he could be making a move, everything else is possible, bluffs are possible, you know, everything is, is included, but as a general rule, this is really, really solid information and should be fundamental knowledge of every winning player out there. You know, how do certain hands perform, not against specific other hands, but also against other ranges. And most players online, you know, they have these kind of tables um, in one form or another. The calculators will get into, I think, more in the, the coming videos. Uh, the last two points I want to look at here, uh, first of all, this was actually shown earlier in one of the previous videos. Uh, have a look at this, uh, Texas Hold'em Flop Calculator. Uh, play with that a bit and this article here on unpaired uh, cards preflop. Really good information. Sometimes, you know, with, with implied odds, uh, which we'll get into here shortly, um, you can make those calls with your, with your nines, you know, against uh, squeezes, you know, and put the, put the squeezer, put the three or four better, you know, on queens or better ace king, and you play for set value. And when you're big stacked, as we saw in the, uh, in the uh, bankroll management video, you know, that can go really well for you if you're holding the set when it's flopped, or it can go really, really badly for you when you're holding that over pair and you're not able to let it go. So um, have a look at these two sites real quickly, and then I think we'll just end up here with Texas Hold'em flop probabilities, which uh, looks like this. On any given board in Texas Hold'em, um, based on this number of combinations, uh, this is what the this is what the probability of certain flops will be, okay? Um, three or more suited, you see here is 18 to 1. Rainbow flops, all different suits, uh, 40 to 1. I'm sorry, 40%, 1.5 to 1. Um, four cards to straight is here empty, right? And you see here on the river, it's in, you're going to see four cards to straight 19% of the time. So one time in five, more or less. Um, a pair, but not two pair, three of a kind, is going to happen one time, you see that, guys? 4.9 to 1, so more or less 5 to 1. One time in six, so one in every six flops, is going to have a pair. Uh, two pair, but not a full house, and you're going to see that uh, on the river about one time in 21, 21 deals. This is basically just a very brief overview of this information. This comes, I believe, from Wikipedia, uh, and then it's just been a yeah, I've just expounded upon it and uh, made a few notes here underneath. You can pause the video and have a look at that when you want to. Gives you general ideas of uh, gives you a general idea of what the flops will look like in Hold'em. You know what turns will look like, what rivers are going to look like um, over a very large sample size. We've looked at ranges. We've looked at um, hand-to-hand -hand matchups. And the question here is, you know, how often are certain ranges? not just certain hands, but certain ranges going to hit flops. Okay, and what this is, is one of the analyses that I did from uh, Flopzilla, 
It's, you can actually download that program at slopzilla.com. It's really, really fantastic. It shows you both what your probability is of hitting certain flops uh, with certain hands, as well as what your probability of hitting certain flops is with certain ranges, as well as that of your opponents. And I ran, you know, certain analyses for different uh, ranges here, different groups of hands uh, with these different boards, right? And how often they're going to hit a high equity hand defined as this, right? How often they're going to hit here at top and over pairs, uh, and how often they're going to do both. Now, um, this is one example of, of uh, the charts that are available to members of our site, and um, this is explained then in greater detail in other videos, also with other charts that are much more, are actually they're, they're paramount for online play, especially when you're making cold calls um, in, yeah, in full ring and six max games what you can, based on, yeah, years and years and years of study and, uh, and analysis, what, what is actually possible for you to call given any certain holding in Texas Hold'em and you then hitting a probable flop on that. And um, there's a lot of coaching that goes, goes into that. Um, you can, you know, you can expand your ranges. You can, uh, you can do a lot of things that are against um, current poker let's say, common sense, uh, okay, the current uh, status quo that's out there. Um, given certain circumstances, I mean, given the right pot odds, given the right players, given the right table, um, you can get away with a lot of things and you can do it mathematically. Those charts, uh, the specifics on that are, of course, um, available to members of our site. Uh, in very, very, very great detail, this is just one of those uh, to give you an example. I know that was a bit dry. Uh, it's probably the driest video that we're going to have. I hope you can appreciate the information that's presented here. It's super, super important, uh, even if it was a bit dry. And again, I mean, we'll get into greater detail based on the certain game types as we go. Okay, but I think for now, that's that's a really decent overview of equity as such, expected value. Again, the hand matchups and the ranges, uh, what we're looking at at Texas Hold'em flops. Uh, both in cash and tournament play. I think we pretty much covered it all, at least everything that I wanted to cover in that video. And what we'll do now is, um, in the upcoming videos, we'll look at position, pot odds, break-even equity, and equity swings from, again, from pre-flop to flop uh, to turn into river.